Hello and welcome back to the Cognitive Whiteboard. My name's Luke and today we're not going to talk about technical best practices. I'm going to share with you an example of why I think communication is at least half the job that we do. I'm going to illustrate that with an example from my history where I think I made a $24 million mistake in an appraisal well. Firstly, the well was drilled safely, uh, was drilled with no environmental impacts, and we achieved all of our appraisal objectives on time and on budget. So it wasn't a mistake in that regard, but I will explain to you why I think it is. Uh, so we had a setting where we were drilling for a low stand sandstone. It was an unusual uh, target for the region. Typically we were looking for something much deeper, but this low stand was essentially within marine shales. Uh, it was in 1500 meters of water, so quite deep um, for us to drill from. And it was under, uh, underlying a very complex overburden of submarine canyons of cuts and fills filled with various uh, clay stones and calcolutites, making a very, very difficult depth conversion. The reservoir itself as well was quite unusual. Uh, what we had in this reservoir was a structural uh, clay. So if you haven't seen this before, it's common for us to see dispersed clays, typically orthogenic cements that are occurring at the grain um, uh, boundaries. We have laminated cements that are commonly depositional. Structural clays, though, few of us had ever encountered, where essentially biotubation had been so pervasive that they, uh, these little creatures had essentially concentrated all of the clay into fecal pellets, and it was providing framework support for the reservoir. So despite a 30 to 40% clay content, we had fantastic porosity and permeability. Um, however, those pellets were relatively ductile, and what we observed in the core was that we would uh, see a dramatic reduction in porosity and permeability associated with increasing uh, external stresses. So the theory then was that if we went down deeper in depth, uh, particularly below mud line, we would probably expect to see a poorer quality reservoir. Now in this particular field, a, a giant field it was, uh, we had over 350 metres of differential burial depth uh, in, across that. So we were really looking at a situation where we could expect to see some depth trend exhibiting, exhibited within the reservoir. So we put together quite a good study, um, presented all of this as technical experts with this story to senior management and said, we think there's a significant risk that the resources will have to be substantially downgraded as a function of this. We were talking from the photomicrographs, we had all of the anecdotes of, of how clays behave. Um, what we were doing though is we were talking in technical jargon in a language that wasn't making sense to the business leaders. Um, and they were talking back to us in the impact that would have on the economics. And what we, what we ended up choosing to do is agreeing to disagree and drill an appraisal well to test the theory. And we drilled it down dip and we found exactly what we thought we would achieve. And I thought at the time, I've done a great job. I'm a geologist, I've made a prediction. The result of the appraisal well was spot on with what we anticipated. And so I went to my mentor and explained that this had happened. And to my surprise, he put his head in his hands and said, if you knew the answer, why did you drill that well? And I really, this is a turning point in my career. It really put me back on my heels. And, and this is where I think my $24 million mistake came. If we knew this so well, and we had such good technical justification, had we worked more on our Rosetta Stone of translating technical jargon to business speak at this conversation, had we built the bridge between these two divides and, and managed that, we may have postponed a $24 million drill. Now this was a major capital project and so it was always going to get drilled. So it is a, a data point that we needed, but could it have been delayed? I don't know that for sure, for sure, but I look back on that and I reference this in my career and it's the reason why I spend so long on these boards because communication is at least half of the job that we should be doing uh, as a geologist. Thanks very much, I'll see you again here next time.